welcome to this video today i'm going to uh, talk about a topic that has been in my mind for several years and i somehow i knew a lot of these things but i did not have the sort of clarity to talk about it uh, and today i'm making an attempt so uh, i have lots of friends who have children with autism my own son has got something called fragile x syndrome uh, in which autism is a feature so he is not uh, like he may be he is in the spectrum of autism but he has other additional problems like adhd and uh, mr and other things so uh, today i'm going to talk about autism through the lens of theosophy now all of you know what uh, autism is basically whoever is watching this knows autism because uh, I, you know you will not come here if you didn't know but uh, it's mainly described as a sensory processing disorder now we have five senses to navigate the world and if these are not processing normally that is we are not seeing hearing or tasting or anything as any other normal person will be then it's called uh, a sensory processing disorder and this is a neurological condition but uh, scientists have actually found nothing wrong in the brain chemistry of autism so far that as far as my research goes and if there is nothing wrong they say that it's just a processing disorder but they do not say exactly what causes the processing disorder that is autism for you but uh, now let's look at the other term theosophy theosophy may be unfamiliar to you but it is it is actually refers to brahma vidya or ancient wisdom or the accumulated wisdom of all the teachings of all religions and it goes but it goes even more deeper into all facets of life and uh, there is some aspect of this which is connected to the, uh, autism in a deep way now uh, what does uh, theosophy say about the human body we all think our human body is our physical body and our mind is in our brain but actually this is not what uh, theosophy says and what theosophy says about the human body is a clue for what autism uh, the solution for under understanding autism so what theosophy says is that we are actually seven fold in bo uh, actually bodies we have seven layers or seven different kinds of constituents in our body so one is our sthula sh sharira starting from the bottom that you see in this chart this is also in our vedic literature in our hindu hindu literature but this has been something which the ancients have always believed in so one is the, our physical body then there is something called an astral body which is our linga sharira which is the per, uh, exact replica of our physical body it is actually the perfect replica of our physical body then you have prana which is the energy which flows in all the meridians which we have uh, the chi the energy that flows through all our uh, chakras and the entire system of chakras and meridians is called uh, the is the third body or the pranic body so called then you have the karma which is our emotion body our emotions are not just in our mind and heart there is a separate body itself so if we are creating emotions of unhappiness then those emotions are actual things in that body the body itself changes its color according to the emotion so anger makes it red and uh, you know calm and peace and tranquility there is blue when there is love there is pink so people who are clairvoyant can see these color changes in the karma karma body then there is the fifth body which is our mind now our mind is not in our brain our brain is like a receptor for our mind so that is the fifth body then you have the buddha buddhic body which is the collected wisdom of all our previous lives and then finally you have the atma which is the spark of the divine which for all of us is the same it's not like you have your atma and i have my atma it is a common spark for all of us now what theosophy says is that there is this higher triad which is the atma buddhi and the higher mind and then there is the lower tri uh, quaternary which is the lower mind the emotion the etheric or what we call the linga sharira and the physical now this is what this lower pers quaternary or is called the personality here and it is what takes uh, goes from birth to birth it keeps changing this is like these four bodies are taken on over and over again different uh, bodies are taken on in every birth but the higher triad remains the same and between these two is an interface which is called the antahkarana which is like a, our conscience so there are times when this higher mind along with the buddhi will give us a, 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 a message a direct message intuitive message and that message uh, comes through this interface or the the connection between the higher and the lower body which 
is what theosophy talks about. So these seven bodies that we talked about are connected with magnetic links, according to theosophy. And uh, what actually it is, is all of these bodies are in and around us. It's like we are a giant egg and in which we have all these bodies mingling and uh, interacting with each other. And there are these magnetic links uh, because they're all they are all particles of some form, maybe subatomic of a very fine order, which uh, Hankin has not yet detected that level of subatomic. So this uh, sevenfold bodies have out of these sevenfold, the four have got a physical form, and they are all magnetically connected. Now, just like as I told you, there is a permanent self in us, and there's a temporary self. We all know our temporary self perfectly. We don't know what the permanent self is all about. But whatever knowledge, wisdom, and uh, whatever, not just knowledge, but basic learning that we get, everybody has get some pakka learning in, the, in every birth. Uh, so that learning remains permanently with us, even in our next birth. I remember as a child, you know, I used to tell uh, to my friends, if you did something wrong, like, uh, paap lagega, ye mat karo, means uh, you will get sin, paap. That concept was known to me even as a child. It's, it amazes me how I knew such things. So uh, possibly from previous births. Now, uh, like I said already, that these are the seven, uh, uh, these bodies are linked together. But what happens at death, let's go a little briefly, those aren't connected to autism, but it makes you understand the physical body. So this, this is what is the main crux that trying to understand our physical body and see what is wrong in the physical body or, or in the actual, the whole body of, an autistic child. So what happens at death basically is that we leave our physical body and our linga sharira at, uh, in the, in, on the earth plane and go to another plane which is also here around earth uh, which is called the Kama Loka along with a part of the linga sharira but we take our emotional body, our mental body and all our higher triad and we go to the Kama Loka and we spend some period of time in the Kama Loka depending on how, uh, how many emotions we have built up and uh, layer by layer, those emotions will dissolve. And finally, we get our actual full rest only in Devachand or the heavenly plane until where we are in a kind of blissful dreamlike state. So until our next birth. So this is uh, something which Theosophy talks about. Now let's go on and try to understand uh, how autism is connected to all of these. You know that even in our Hindu literature, we have the Panchakosha. Now, what has uh, happened, what has happened is that normally we do not see this electromagnetic body called the Linga Sharira or astral body, but those who are clairvoyant can. And all our senses, which are we call our senses, that is a seeing, hearing, smelling, all the five senses actually have their centers in this astral body. They don't have a these are again like receptors. All of these uh, senses that we actually have in our body are receptors which go to that other body. So that is uh, another aspect that we have to see. So clairvoyantly, uh, many uh, the some one particular prominent theosophist has seen uh, the bodies of various people and a lot of healing. Her name is Dora Kunz and she was the president of uh, the Theosophical Society in America. And uh, she developed a technique called therapeutic touch in which uh, nurses were trained, thousands of nurses were trained in how to heal by centering yourself and doing a kind of pranic energy, taking energy from elsewhere and then giving uh, energy through the hand. So this was called therapeutic touch. And uh, it's, uh, it's almost the same as pranic healing. And she also wrote several other books like the chakras and you see the personal aura, et cetera, and spiritual healing. So she said in one of her literature, which I actually have not been able to identify which one that is, and I'm still searching for it, but I have read it. Uh, she says that she saw in the autistic child that the magnetic links between the linga sharira, that is the astral body, that is the body which has all our senses, that is not connected properly to our physical body. So whatever we see is not getting uh, absorbed by but whatever an autistic child sees is not getting absorbed by him because it is not reaching that astral sense of seeing. It is going through his eyes, but he's not really seeing. Similarly, he's hearing, but he's not really hearing. So that is uh, one of the things. And this is perhaps what is the cause of all the features that autism presents. Now, see, humanity has never, uh, so far, science has not given us uh, any proof of this astral body that we all possess, except for, uh, you know, some... Uh, little evidence to the Kirlian photography where people have been able to uh, photograph this astral body in, and this exists not just in humans it also exists in animals and plants also so this is like a model body 
which is if you also research Rupert Sheldrake and he's also talked about it. He says that it is like a uh, that is a uh, morphic resonance or a morphic field around everything, which is actually creating the physical form. So that is exactly what the linga sharira is. The linga sharira is first form before the physical form. Physical form is made. So that is how uh, important the linga sharira is. Now, if in an autistic child this there is no connection, then there is a lot of problems. Now, again, when you try to understand what the mind is, mind is not in our brain. So the mind in the autistic child also, if there's this disconnection, it means that the, even if the mind is completely healthy, he is able to understand everything, but he's unable to communicate his understanding. So that is why we find a lot of success in picture pointing and typing as modes of communication in autism so far. Similarly, there are uh, 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 emotions because there is no speech or there's very limited speech, emotions are they are not able to express, though they are deeply felt by the child. So uh, the, the disconnection also means that uh, he, can, he feels frustrated because he cannot communicate. He feels so tired of not being able to, being understand, to, uh, to, under, to be understood. He just wants to leave the place and they tend to wander a lot. They go away, simply walk away in any direction they want because they're so tired of living inside that shell. They also make lots of noises because they really want to communicate, but they, they cannot do it. And uh, similarly, uh, they, are, they are more uh, aware of their astral senses or whatever is going on inside them, although they are not aware of what is going on outside. And hence, they seem to be able to be aware of the thoughts of others, the feelings of others, and that also disturbs them. The atmosphere of a room they are able to be aware of. So these are all very uh, different things about autistic children. Now, another thing is, why do they enjoy music? So this gives them the, you know, they do feel very depressed. They, they are sad children, you know, because, because they are not able to interact with the world. They see the unhappiness, but they're not able to do anything. So music calms them down because music calms all of us down. It calms all our emotions. When you're very, very emotionally upset, it's very good to listen to music. So that gives them a temporary peace. Another thing is they like, some of them like to eat and they overeat to the point of vomit. This is also because somehow the food helps to calm down their emotions also. So uh, also overeating maybe because of they, they, they tend to be depressed. Now, one of the cures for such uh, for, for this overeating and for all the emotional disturbance is to take the children to any kind of natural place where there's lots of trees and waters, waterfalls, you know, different natural things because there are a lot of negative ions in nature and nature can be a great, great boost for these children. So these negative ions go directly to our blood uh, and uh, they directly... Uh, increase the serotonin levels of our blood, which directly improves our happiness levels. So that is why it's very recommended that allowing music, allowing nature to be part of these children's lives. Now, can these magnetic links, which is between this Linga Sharira, which is my theory, or which is what I have read through Dora Kun's books, uh, can, they be, can they be repaired? Maybe they can be through pr pranic healing, but uh, there it must be a, a really competent pranic healer who is also clairvoyant, who is seeing exactly what is wrong in the autistic child's uh, body and is able to make that uh, healing possible. So I have not heard of anybody who has yet developed that uh, level of technique, but mostly it is through repetitive action, repetitive movement, uh, occupation therapy, etc. that, uh, you know, basically parents are able to do something. Now uh, let's go on to what is the use of knowing all of these things. But if you're aware clearly of what, what it is, that is wrong with your child, at least you know that, you know, it's not some kind of behavior disorder. This is uh, one of the things which is, I'm very, very unhappy about that it's called a behavior disorder as if the child has a choice. If you look at it, all of them behave in this similar way. You know, they have the same any jump, you know, very, there's a lot of similarities, shaking, moving. When they shake, you know, many of them feel out of their body. They are not connect. So much is a disconnection between their astral body and their higher bodies and the physical that they don't feel themselves in the body. And that is the reason why they tend to jump. That is the reason they want to keep on holding something and you know, shake, 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 shake. That gives them a sense that they are here. Now, if you feel you're dreaming somewhere and then you then you shake yourself like this, you will be grounded on earth. So it this helps them to actually hear and see this, this kind of motion and the physical repetitive, this rocking motion helps them to hear and see and respond. 
that is why they do those things so they are suffering a lot and it's our job to help make them understand that they are suffering and it's also your job to tell them that there are times you need your rest so you create those boundaries and say child i will help you when i can help you but when i cannot help you when i'm tired and i want to do something different you should allow me to do that and i'm sure the children understand if we are empathetic to them they will be empathetic to us so these are a ways of managing the autistic child's problem and i think as if i were a parent with autism a child with autism i would certainly try very hard to understand this whole business of the astral body and the links and what is the possible cure in that now this is one thing which you know all of us think about is why did this happen to our child so i am only guessing that could be that these children have have been yogis in past births and they've been practicing out of body experiences so now they've come with a body that they are not able to connect with that is another one one idea second is that maybe nature is trying to develop a, a different kind of model because we notice these children are non competitive very very kind hearted peaceful compassionate wonderful beings inside them they have some purity and beauty which normal children with normal intelligence do not have they are full normal children are full of selfishness and self centeredness and one upmanship and you know bully like nature but as these children are so soft and so beautiful so maybe nature is trying to develop a new model of humanity so there is this disconnection between the physical body so that the child is more uh, the such humans are more centered on their higher selves but right now this is not a functional it is still developing it it is not yet functional and it could be that after 2 300 years these children who are autistic today if they are born in the future maybe they will be so calm such beauties of human beings that people will like admire them they will be like you know sort of uh, highly uh, self realized human being so i don't know uh, that could be that could be the reason nature is doing a lot of things evolution is part of life and it is evolving and if you read theosophy you will know that we have come or from animals and we are, we came on earth according to theosophy 18 million years ago fully formed as human but we did our trip uh, you know growth as animals and before that as plants and all that uh, in other other universes so now uh, we come back to i mean i do not believe that it has anything to do with these children being high yogis coming to uh, you know uplift humanity i don't think so a lot of people believe that uh, a lot of people believe is because of pollution i don't think so that is also true i think this is uh, this is way too common and that is why i think uh, it is nature trying to do something also is mostly my idea that nature is trying to evolve a different kind of humanity so uh, finally what theosophy says is the final aim of all life is that the jivatma has to merge with the with the parmatma and uh, that will happen only when the man reflects in his mind and heart all qualities of that parmatma so he has to take numerous births to become that uh, diamond soul where he can reflect everything which is pure and beautiful and he takes a long time because he makes so many mistakes he has to make so many corrections and he has to do a lot uh, to to change himself and to develop those qualities so these uh, this type of growth is does not have any end according to theosophy you keep on growing until the end of the universe which is pralaya and it's not like even the higher highest of highest are still growing still changing there are things that they are doing they have challenges so there is no end to growth and we should look at as a parent with autism we should look at uh, saying that uh, you know these two kind of challenges we can overcome and we will overcome uh, and one of the ways to overcome this is to understand it so good luck and thank you so much for watching